Okay, in the last video we talked about the fundamental theorem of algebra. We also talked about how um, you know we now have better tools to figure out our zeros and what kinds of zeros that we're going to be looking for. Every single polynomial function, whatever the degree is of the polynomial function, it has that many zeros. So if we're talking about a third degree equation, we have three zeros. Now some of them will be real, some of them will be imaginary. They are all complex numbers because the complex number system is made up of the real numbers and then also the imaginary numbers. Now, um, in the example that we looked at earlier, which if you saw the earlier video, it said negative um, 4x cubed um, plus x squared plus x plus 2. That was our function that we looked at earlier. And we graphed that on our calculator and we saw that it actually only had one real zero. There was one place where it actually crossed the x-axis and we could see that happening. So if it has to have three zeros, then that means the other two have to be imaginary. Now this is extremely important because if the other two are imaginary, why two? Is that something that's you know we need to pay attention to? Well, it absolutely is because imaginary numbers come in conjugate pairs. They have to. If we have a root that is a, an, an imaginary number in, in complex form would be a plus bi, then we must also have the conjugate to that, which is a minus bi. All imaginary numbers happen in pairs every single time. That's why in this earlier problem up here, we had one real and two imaginary. Let's look through an example and see what how this is going to help us here. Okay, we have a degree 6 polynomial. That tells us that there have to be six zeros. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. We know we have to have those. They have given us that we have a zero at i, we have one at 3 minus 2i, and we have one at negative 2 minus i. Well, if they've given us 3, we know we have to have 6, so that means there are three others out there floating around. But because these are imaginaries, they have to have their complex conjugate that goes with it, their complex numbers. So we have to have the conjugate. The conjugate to i would be negative i. The conjugate to 3 minus 2i would be 3 plus 2i. And the conjugate to negative 2 minus i would be negative 2 plus i. Now notice in every single one of these, the real number part did not change. It was only the imaginary part. That's incredibly important because it is the imaginary part changing signs that creates that conjugate.